let's take a look at a couple of different ways that we can determine probability. One is experimental probability, and the other one is theoretical probability. So in this particular um, scenario here, we've got a four a spinner with four regions, uh, blue, yellow, cyan, and red. So there's four four sectors here. And if we're going to spin this thing, then in theory, the theoretical probability of it landing on the yellow would be 25% or one fourth, because there are four different regions, they're all the same size. So we would expect that 25% of the time or one quarter of the time, the spinner would end up in yellow and one quarter of the time, blue, red, and cyan and so on. But the experimental probability is the probability that you get if you actually conduct the experiment. So let's do this. I'm gonna spin this thing once. So we'll do number of spins one and we will spin this thing and see where it ends up. It ended up in the yellow. So the experimental percentage would be 100%. If we just did this spin once, we would say, well, it's always gonna land in yellow 100% of the time and it's never gonna land in blue, cyan, or red. But you would be quick to say, well, that's ridiculous because if we spun it a bunch more times, it wouldn't always land in yellow, at least not likely, not in theory. It should only land there 25% of the time. So let's, let's do four spins. So if we did this four times, oh, the first time was cyan. So, so far 100% are there, but the next one was blue. Oh, we got cyan again. And we got blue again. So, so far with our experimental probability, now it's 50% of the time it's going to land in blue and 50% of the time it's going to land in cyan and it's never going to land in yellow and it's never going to land in red. Um, but you would say, well, we've only done it four times. So if we spun it more than that, likely we would start to see some yellows and reds. And so let's reset this thing and let's do 100 spins. And I'm not going to let it do this simulation 100 times. I'm going to skip to the end. And now you can see if we did this 100 times, some of these experimental percentages are getting pretty close to the theoretical. So blue would have landed there 26% of the time. Same with yellow. A little bit more in cyan and a little bit less in red. And you could say, well, let's do this 10,000 times. And oh, only let us do 1,000. Okay, fine. We'll do it 1,000 times and we'll skip to the end. And doing it a thousand times, these percentages are getting very, very close now to 25%. So the experimental probability will get very close to the theoretical probability the more times you conduct the experiment. So those are kind of two terms there, um, some vocabulary. Experimental probability is the probability of an occurring based on experimental results. Theoretical probability, the probability calculated probability of an event occurring. Okay, let's go back to this example that we did up here. Remember this one, we, re, we were flipping a coin and we were rolling a die. And the coin, we could get heads or tails, and the die, we would get one, two, three, four, five, six. We did our tree diagram, which enabled us to list our outcomes. The question we asked was, what's the probability of getting a heads followed by an even number? And we looked at our um, outcomes, heads and evens. There was three of them. So three out of 12 in total gave us one quarter. Well, there's actually a much quicker way of finding this probability. Let's look at this again. The probability of getting heads and an even number. So the answer was one quarter. Well, if we looked at... What was the probability? Let's actually let's just do this down here. What's the probability of getting heads? The two events were heads and an even number. If we look at the probability of getting heads, well, there's only one head on this, it would be on the other side of this coin. And there's two outcomes, obviously heads and tails. So the probability of getting heads is one out of two. There's one favorable outcome, and there's two outcomes in total. Now let's look at the second event, which was an even number on the die. Well, how many even numbers are there on a six-sided die? There would be three, two, four, and six. So the probability of getting an even number is three out of the total outcomes 
which is 6. And 3 out of 6 can be reduced to 1 out of 2. So check out what happens if we take these two probabilities, so the probability of the heads was a half, and we multiply that by the probability of an even number, which is a half. One half times one half is one quarter, which is the same outcome that we got, the same probability that we got when we looked at the sample space and drew the tree diagram and figured out how many favorable outcomes there were out of the total. So this is a very important concept that says the probability of two or more independent events can be found by multiplying the probability of each individual event occurring. So in other words, the probability of A and B, the probability of these two events occurring, if they're independent, can be found by just going the probability of A times the probability of B. Let's look at this example. What's the probability of flipping a coin and getting tails and then rolling a six-sided die and getting a five? So the question's asking, what's the probability of getting a tails followed by the number five? Well, let's, let's figure out what's the probability of getting tails. Well, first flipping a coin, the chance of tails is one out of two. There's only one tails on the, on the coin, and there's a total of two different outcomes. And what would be the probability of rolling a six-sided die and getting the number five? Well, there's only one five on the dice, on the die, and there's a total of six sides. So the probability of getting tails and the number five would be one half, that's the probability of tails, times one out of six, that's the probability of getting a five. We multiply these together and we would get one twelfth as our probability of getting tails on a coin and five on a die. Let's look at example two. What's the probability of drawing a green marble out of the first bag and a green marble out of the second bag? Okay, well, what's the probability of getting a green in here? We'll use G for green. Uh, let's see, how many greens are there? One, two, three, four. There's four favorable outcomes, four things that we want out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the chance of getting green in the first bag is four ninths. The probability of getting green on the second bag is 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 4 out of 12. And hey, let's make our math a bit easier and reduce this. We can divide everything by 4, divide this by 4, and we get 1 out of 3. So the probability of getting a green in the first and a green in the second. We would take our two probabilities and we would multiply them together. And we would get 4 out of 27. So 4 times 1 is 4. 9 times 3 is 27. 4 27 If we wanted a percentage, we could go 4 divided by 27, which gives us a decimal, and times 100 would be 14.8%. Let's round it to the nearest whole percent. So we'll bump this up to 15. So this is approximately 15% would be the probability of drawing a green and another green. And we'll look at one final example. The probability that it rains in Vancouver today is 70%. The probability that it rains in Toronto today is 30%. What is the probability that it will rain in both cities today? So we'll assume that it's independent, that if it rains in Vancouver, that doesn't necessarily mean that it rains in Toronto. Um, so the probability, the probability that it rains in both cities, kind of hard to do some letters for that, R and R, I guess, we'll say rains in both cities, cities would be, so the probability that's raining in Vancouver today is 70%. Oh, so we're going to have to convert this to a decimal. So remember, 70% is the same thing as 70 out of 100. And dividing by 100 moves the decimal to the left two places. So that would be 0 0.70 in Vancouver multiplied by 30%, which is 30 out of 100, which is 0.30 or 0 0.30.
and well, we can do that in the calculator, or 0.7 times 0.3 would just be 0.21. If you don't believe me, 0 0.70 times 0 0.30 is 0.21, 0 0.21. So that would be the probability that it rains in both cities, and we could convert that back to a percent by multiplying 100, which just moves the decimal right two places. So we would get 21% would be the probability that it rains in both cities. So when you have to find the probability of more than one uh, event, as long as they're independent, you can find the probability of the events occurring by just multiplying the probability of each individual event. And that will be the probability of all those events occurring.